Okay, so now that we have the animation finished, we're going to add some special effects. So first of all, let's create a new light. I'm going to scrub back to the first position, in the first frame. What we're going to do is add a light so that that light will cast a shadow as the ball bounces on the surface. We'll see a shadow uh, moving with the ball. And uh, we're also going to add um, some reflectivity to both the ball and this surface so that we'll be able to see reflections of each on each. So first of all, let's create that light we were talking about. I'm going to zoom back so we can get a, a wide view of everything. Now in order to create it, you simply go under the Create menu and go down to Lights. And we have a choice of different kinds of lights. Let's use a directional light. Click on that and you can see we have the light now. I was in the Scale tool, so uh, what we want to do is move it. Press W and then you can see that the uh, lights have a direction. There are arrows pointing in the direction that the light will be going. So we want to make that work in uh, a dynamic way for the bouncing ball. So we want to position this so that it shines down on the ball. So let's move it back here and let's rotate it. Press the E key and rotate it so that it's going to be shining towards the ball and down on the ball. Let's move it up a little bit higher and let's scrub through and see. Okay. Now we have to do a couple other things <clears throat> in our uh, render settings so that uh, we'll have shadows and reflections. And so let's go into the render settings. And under Maya Software tab, let's change the quality to medium quality and those we can leave the same. Let's uh, expand this out a little bit. I'll go down to ray tracing and click on that. I'll select ray tracing and then that's what gives us our shadow and reflection effect because it acts as if those rays are real. So let's take this to a spot right about in the middle of the animation and zoom in a little bit and let's do a render current frame and see if we get any reflection or shadow. Okay there's our shadow and you can see a little reflection coming up on the ball. Now we need to add some more light to that because you can see that it's the shadows are a little bit sharp. So let's do that. Let's add another light. Go into lights again and we'll create an ambient light. And that just creates a nice even light all around the area. So we can just leave it at the origin. That's good enough. And let's try another render. Let's see what that does. Okay, so that's better. That gives us light from above and around and we can see the sides of the of the surface and we can also see the shadow coming from the directional light. But now we want to see if we can get if we're getting a reflection off of the surface and not just off the ball. So let's scrub it in closer so it's closer to the surface and let's move in for a look to see if it'll show up. 
there's our reflection right there and we can adjust in the material how it reflects uh, more intensely or more completely but I think that's nice enough right there yes yeah, it'll look pretty realistic all right now at this point we need to set it up for our export we've already done that pretty much let's go back into the common tab and we had it set for 200 frames we only are using um, a little over a hundred in the whole animation and so it's less than six seconds total but let's let's go ahead and change it to 100 as far as the frame range so 1 to 100 and we'll stay in the perspective mode and let's go ahead and change this to 1080 by 720 and everything else is good so when we do a frame render that'll come out bigger yeah, it looks pretty nice. So let's export this. And that's called a batch render. So we have to go under a different mode, and that will be the rendering mode. And you can see our menu options have changed. So click on render, go down to batch render, and click on that. And if you watch the status bar down here, it'll show you the process and the progress of the rendering of the animation. We can also check the progress by going into the images where the rendering results will take place. When you have shadows and when you have reflections, that adds quite a bit to the time. But it just had a little, took a little bit of a time getting started. And now it's done. So we can check this, first of all, by using a tool or an application that comes with Maya called FCheck. And if you don't have it in your dock, which this is what it is, it looks like that, then go into your applications, look for it there, and bring it down to your dock. So you go into your Autodesk folder, I'm in Maya at 2018, and there's your F check. So click on that and drag it down into your dock next to Maya. I'm not going to do it again because I already have it. And then click on it, and we'll go into that. And the purpose of F check is so that you can look at the way your animation looks rendered out before importing it into an edit program. So here we have the interface on that. And in order to check on an animation, you go like this, File, Open Sequence instead of Image, and the shortcut is Command-A. So we click on that, and then it'll navigate to the folder where your images are. And a bouncing ball, the images are in the Images folder because we set our project window at the beginning and you want to click on the first one and then it automatically will open all the rest of them. Now you can see that's going way too fast. Uh, it's not real time so what we need to do is uh, here in the info page we need to check uncheck every frame okay and that'll give it a real time bounce and look. So that's looking pretty pretty I think You could probably position it a little better. I like it coming in off from off screen like that and then bouncing out off screen. So that's pretty cool. I think what I would do is probably move it back a little bit further so that uh, we see more of it as it bounces off. It gives it more looking room. So let's do that. Hold down the option key, middle mouse button, move it back like that. And... Maybe back a little bit more 
let's see how that looks. And also another thing we need to do so we know exactly what it's going to look like is we go to view and then down to camera settings and we want to choose resolution gate and we want safe action. So that shows us, anyway, that gives us a good idea of what we'll be seeing in the final version. And I'm going to go ahead and re-render it. Go into render mode and batch render. And since we haven't changed the name of the file at all, it'll render over top of all those other ones that we had before. It'll just replace them. You can see it's rendering pretty fast down there. And we're done. So let's do the F check one more time. And again, let's uncheck every frame. We'll do the shortcut Command A and navigate to where we're storing the images. Click on the first one, hit enter, and it'll open up. So I like that a lot. I think that looks great. Looks very organic, very natural, almost photorealistic. And so now we're ready to import it into a video editing program, Premiere. Just remember that if you're importing it into Premiere that you need to set the preferences in Premiere so that the each frame imports that it's only one frame long and it's not um, like five seconds long. And you know how to do the rest.